Hello GED students, it's GED question of the daytime. Uh, today's problem says a graph the point to determine in which quadrant or on which axis of the coordinate plane each point lies. So we have a bunch of points here. We can see that we have the at least the coordinate pairs that represent the address of those points. And we are to, to de determine where on the graph those points um, end up. So let's take a look here. First of all, there's some language you need to know. You need to know uh, what the quadrants are, and you need to know what the axes of the graph are. One, one um, is an axis, but two, more than one, is an, are axes. Okay, so the quadrants are the four natural corners of a graph that the two axes end up breaking the graph into. So these two lines, these two axes, the x-axis, the horizontal axis, axis, sorry, and the y-axis, the vertical axis, between the two of them, they break this graph into four pieces, and those are known as quadrants. You always start up here in the upper right quadrant, that is quadrant one, and we tend to use Roman numerals for quadrant, so that's why it looks like quadrant I, but I assure you, I do mean one. And then it goes counterclockwise, the opposite direction of a clock. And so this will be quadrant two, three, and four. Quadrant four, IV is four. Okay, so um, I'm going to look at each one of these points and see if it lies on an axis or in which quadrant. So let's go ahead. The first point, 2, 0. So this says, from the origin, go horizontally 2, but go 0 in a vertical direction. Do not go up or down. So I'm going to go horizontally 2, 1, 2, and I'm not going to go up or down. And you can see that this point actually doesn't lie in one of the quadrants. It lies on the x-axis. So for number 1, I would write x-axis. Okay, let's look at the next point here, negative 2, 1. Okay, remember that your first um, number in a point is your x value, your horizontal movement. And the second number is your y value, your vertical movement. So that means I'm going to come negative 2 in the horizontal direction. And then I'm going to go 1, positive 1, or up 1 in the uh, vertical direction. So there's the point negative 2, 1. And where did I end up? In quadrant 2. Okay, now let's try the point negative 4, negative 3. So again, starting at the origin, starting at 0, 0, I go uh, horizontally negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Then from there, I'm going to go vertically negative 3 or down 3, 1, 2, 3. And that's where my third point, point 3, ends up, and you can see that I'm in quadrant 3. And I'm going to write QIII -I -I for quadrant 3. Great. Now this one I know I always have memorized as in quadrant 1 because hopefully you know we always start where everything's positive. Since both these numbers are positive, I'm going to end up in quadrant 1. It's the only quadrant I have memorized. But if you're like me and you don't like to memorize positive, negative, negative, positive, 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 negative, negative, then you could just go graph the point like I would. So you could come over here 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, and hopefully it's clear that you end up there in quadrant 1. So that's Q1, of course. We always start where everything's positive. That's the first quadrant. Okay, let's take a look at this next point. You can see in this one I have no horizontal movement. Since I have a zero for my x coordinate, I have no horizontal movement. But I do have some vertical movement, negative three. So starting at the origin, I'm just going to go down three. One, two, three. And I can see this time I'm again on an axis, but it's the y axis. Okay. And now last one, the point positive 3, negative 1. I'm going to come out positive 3 in the horizontal direction, and then I'm going to go down 1 or negative 1 in the vertical direction. I'll end up down here, and I'm clearly in quadrant 4, quadrant IV. Wonderful. If you have any questions about this or anything else, drop them in the comments, and I will be glad to answer them for you.